Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. happy friday it is another friday oh my goodness oh my goodness it has been a long week at least for me it's been an extremely long week so last week we're just gonna jump right in because we got a lot to talk about and as you can see the title of the today's uh, podcast is the devil made me do it accountability We're going to talk about accountability. I know it's Friday. I know we should just be having such a light, 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 light day. But we got to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about a couple of stories of which the story really how this podcast for me for this week came about. Now, I had already made this week accountability, but I figured why not mess with the title and just call it The Devil Made Me Do It. Now, I've said it before. I am a preacher's kid, which is also known as a PK that is something that PKs call themselves preacher kids and as a preacher kid I mean the gambit of religious wordages I want to call it is real one of the most favorite I won't even say favorite but one of the most recognized ones for me growing up was like the devil made me do it so when I was growing up there was a man in my my church I must have been 11 12 so he would you know we would have these confessions on Sunday and he would be like oh I'm confessing whatever it was that he was confessing and then at the end he would be like the devil made me do it so the the pastor at the time would be like no the devil didn't make you do that that was you now for us as kids because again when you're a preacher's kid or a PK you're in church especially on Sundays almost like two services you know you were there Saturday you were there Wednesday you were there Friday I mean church services would just never end it like I spent 90% of my time in church and probably the other 5% at home and the other five at school so that that was pretty much my entire life so being a preacher's kid that does not none of that leaves you like I could get up in a moment's notice and say every church church field type of you know colloquialism like I can say them all like I know them all and so this week was supposed to be accountability for the blog. I mean, the podcast. And then, you know, Latoya Luckett, she is one of the former members of Des- Destiny's Child. She is pregnant um, with her second child, a boy. She has a, a daughter together with her husband. And then her husband has um, a daughter from his previous, I believe his previous marriage. And allegedly we say allegedly here when we don't have full confirmation but allegedly he had cheated on her and the side chick is now basically trying to shop around this video and the evidence of the cheating now Latoya Luckett is pretty much due any moment now but of course you obviously as a pregnant woman want to go full term and you want to go as late as you possibly can well let me not say late you want to go with well within the due date as much as you can going late is like the worst thing you can do for a pregnant woman trust so as this video is now being shopped this woman is shopping you know trying to basically get the best buck for her video to basically expose him and you know everything is always about money money rules everything she is come out they're aware of it allegedly and um basically you know, as she's about to have her second baby, she should be resting. She just had her virtual baby shower. She really should just be glowing like she is. Now she's dealing with this thought of her husband cheating on her. Now, if you've watched the, I believe the family hustle this last season, they were on there. And supposedly I have not, I did watch the episode in question. I don't watch the episodes in general. I think I caught the episode on internet, really like on YouTube or something, just because I've kind of dedicated not trying to um trying not to be as much as on you on on not just social media watching like 
reality TV. However, a couple of weeks ago when the episode first came out, so I watched it way before the news of this infidelity hit, again, alleged infidelity hit. And I wanted to watch it because everybody was like, you know, did you see the way that he had talked to her? Now he was dealing with the death of his mother. And in addition to that, they were having some issues. Now me dealing with the death of my mother-in-law and seeing how my husband, you know, transitioned with that wasn't as, it wasn't an easy task. What I'm grateful for was that my husband wasn't ignorant, rude, or inconsiderate in any way in the midst of his grief. However, that's not the same thing for Latoya Luckett's husband. He was very disrespectful. He got on a plane and like left for three days, no call, no text. Mind you, Latoya was at home with her, with their youngest daughter. And it's just the way that he was talking. He was very narcissistic, um, very ignorant. And I know they were just like, you know, they weren't counseling and things like that. And I for one know what that's like when you're in counseling due to marital issues. So I give them kudos for attempting to go. But even in the midst of the counseling, I think they showed the one part of the first season. It was just like a very rocky, um, rocky conversation. And again, those very first conversations, especially in marital counseling, is very rough. So I don't judge him based upon that. I do have a problem with a husband thinking that he could catch a flight and go anywhere without telling his wife, one, where he's going, why he's going. Um, even with the most liberal of marriages, I just believe that communication should always be key and for safety reasons. And the fact that she's at home with their young child, even if she has her mother or friends or family around to help her, that's not their job. Their job, his job is to be there to help and support his wife. So that turned me off initially, but I tried to press through, you know, because again, me being a married woman, I understand that all marriages are not the same. So I don't want to judge someone else's marriage, even based upon a snippet of what I see. However, I preface that and say that sometimes when we see these snippets of people in their marriages, it does somehow reveal, even if it's temporarily, it still reveals character flaws. Like it still shows where people are. And so again, the the revelation of that episode was very eye opening. Because I'm an outsider looking in, it's easy for me to analyze their situation. It was very easy for me to be like, mm, you know, there's some mess there. So now we fast forward to her being you know, almost to completely, you know, do for her baby. And now this allegation of, you know, why he was doing, you know, those times that he was leaving, that he was allegedly having this affair. Now, whether that was true, whether it's true or not, is not my business. My problem is, is that his answer to that, at least on social media was the devil is busy. Now, you can't tell somebody about the devil being busy more than me. Cause I know all about that whole inner out and that whole conversation about what the devil is. And we ain't gonna let the devil take our joy. We ain't gonna let the devil come and steal our life. And we, we rebuke the devil and all that. Let me tell you something. You can rebuke the devil to literally till Jesus come back for real. However, there's just personal accountability that, that goes side and side. That's not always the devil's issues, not always the devil's fault. So this thought process of always blaming the devil and let me tell you, like, if you believe in the devil or if you don't, it's neither here nor there because you can call the devil whatever you choose. It's just about making an excuse of someone else's fault when the reality is that the person in the mirror is 90% of the reason of the fault that needs to be taken. But we don't want to talk about that. We only want to talk about the fact that we want to blame other things. Whether you call that the devil, you can call it alcohol, you can call it drugs, you can call it whatever you choose. There is a choice between that choice and what, what it is that you're doing. No different than when Kevin Hart did it. Kevin Hart did the same thing. His wife was pregnant. She hears and reads about this mess on the blog or gets, well, not necessarily on the blog. She got an email and blah, blah, blah. If you've seen the episode, well, the, I want to say the special where he talks about that, about him messing up again, because, you know, he cheated on his first wife. Now he cheated on the second wife, you know, the rib, um, the McRibs and all that other carrying on, whatever the case may be. You know, no one is exempt from that. I'm not exempt from that. My husband could easily do whatever he's doing. Shoot, I could easily do whatever I want to do, you know, on him. Because really, you know, marriage is a piece of paper. The commitment is beyond that paper. And so we have to make choices every single day. We have to wake up and choose our spouses every day. First, choosing ourselves. I know that sounds very selfish, right? Why would you get married to choose yourself? But you really do have to choose yourself every single day. It doesn't matter if you're married. It doesn't matter if you're single or divorced. Whatever the case may be. You literally have to wake up and choose yourself every single day. So beyond the fact that once you choose yourself, then you also have to choose your spouse. You really do. You have to make that decision of what it is that you're going to do to honor yourself and your spouse. So with that being said, 
it's not I'm not shocked by it because it's you know it's so much going on in this world and with the world just to me like going to hell in a handbasket and I say that because we got COVID running around something that we would have never thought we would ever have to ever deal with something small as a as a viral infection that's taking over our lives that's messing with people's respiratory I mean you messing people's breathing I mean what else can you do? You know, there's so many things going on that even if I thought at one point that this was like an impossibility, I mean, just too much stuff going on. It just says, okay, it is what it is. So Latoya Luckett's husband, Kevin Hart is not the only people that's done it. It's regular people doing this every single day. Folks messing with people's sisters, so-and-so messing with folks, best friend and cousin. Like none of this stuff is abnormal. None of this stuff is like, you know, something that's never in life has ever happened. However, and I preface this by saying accountability goes a long way. So this whole devil made me do it. The devil is busy. The devil must have been busy, but what was you doing contributing to the situation? You know what I mean? And so I I feel like, you know, he's the story's already written. It's going to be the whole, you know, I didn't know how to deal with the death of my mother. You know, she was the best thing that ever happened to me. I just lost my way. You you can lose your way a thousand one times, but you also have to understand even in the midst of you losing your way and feeling like whatever you want to feel, you don't desert your wife and at the, or your husband, because again, this goes both ways. This is not just a male bashing moment. This goes both ways, but I mean, let's just keep it a hundred. You don't do that. And you knew whether she was pregnant at the time you were just doing your dirt or not. You just don't do it. Like when I think about it, when you think about it, there's a choice, like right before everything could literally go down, you literally have that option to decide to walk away from the situation and make the right choice to honor your husband or to honor your wife and above all honor yourself. That's why I said you have to honor yourself. Because you know, you might be thinking about your husband, wife and be like that man ain't even honorable. Like I'm not honoring him. But if you honor yourself, you'll enter honor, honor, you'll end up honoring him or vice versa. But you have to honor yourself. Because what do I look like? laying down with another man knowing making that conscious decision and then thinking about how my husband would feel and to feel how it would be if this was on the other side like I always I don't know I was always taught that when you think about doing something such like that you have to think about how you would feel if you were doing the same thing and your mate was laying down at the same moment doing that same thing because in reality you open up Pandora's box so I just find it very interesting that this whole devil you know the devil made me do it and we just don't want to take personal responsibility and it's a hard because I would never want to go through any type of cheating scandal or anything regardless, but I would probably double, double, doubly not want to go through that while I'm being pregnant because the way the, um, our, you know, your emotions are when you're, when you're pregnant and you're trying to get your life together and these emotions are like attacking you from every which way, it's just not the appropriate time. And reality is that she should always have been protected. But this is the other thing. Let me know. Don't let the blogs tell me right I don't know how she found out or if she knows because again this is all alleged but what I do know is that get ahead of it like don't disrespect me even further and add salt to the wound by making sure by even allowing me to have heard it from a source that's not you that would be like somebody posting my husband online and then me finding out because somebody posted it but my husband didn't tell me and FYI in this 2020 year of our Lord and Savior Can we just understand that at the end of the day, this is a very technical world. What that means is you have, everybody has the ability to record. Everybody, broke people, rich people, middle class people, folks with one leg, folks with one eye, one, you don't got to have no qualifications to have a cell phone. So everybody named mama has a cell phone. Little children got cell phones. My kids don't, but little kids have cell phones. So if we live in the cell, the cell phone world, if we live in this social media world, even if that person never dimes you out from the very beginning, folks just hold stuff in the back of their pocket just to get you at the right time. And so I think that, you know, back in the day, you could cheat a little bit differently. But this is like the screenshot, you know, screenshot life that we live in. We live in the uh, post and tag moment uh, um, lifestyle. We live in the I'm going to send it through the DMs. We live in the, I'm going to send it through, uh, whatever the case may be, because technology is so in our hands. You can edit things, you can record quicker, you can expose somebody super fast. So I don't understand the thought process in 2020 with people this day is not realizing that very, very small concept. Everything that you say, everything that you do can be seen. 
So this whole the devil is busy and Lord fix it. You want Jesus to come in and fix it after you allow you and the devil to make the decision to go cheat on your wife. And now you want Jesus to come and fix it. I mean, make it make sense. I mean, we all of us do that to a certain extent, whether we call it, like I said, we can call whatever it is that we like to call, whatever it is that we like to call. But at the end of the day, we all do that. But isn't it ironic how we want somebody to give us a lifeboat after we done wrecked havoc on our own lives, everybody's lives around us. And now we don't want to hold any accountability. We just want to blame it on something else. It's just a really amazing to me. It really is. Another devil made me do it moment. And again, like I said, it could be anything that you choose because y'all, some folks, y'all get so hung up. Lord, she talking about the devil. She know that she worshiping the devil. Uh, First and foremost, ain't nobody got time for the devil and nothing else. Not in this day and age. Not, I ain't got no time. And it ain't time to give the devil no credit. I'm just telling you right now, you better find some type of personal responsibility and figure out how to handle your situation. Because even when you make a mistake, ultimately it's you that has to fix it. And you have to be willing to fix it. But you got to start with, like, at least, at least acknowledging that. I mean, you ever seen the people in the movies with the, the AA meeting? You got to say, hi, my name is. And you wish you got to say what your issue is. That's because personal responsibility is real. Like, it's not something that you can get away with. Now, this next topic is going to be a little hard for some of y'all. Because, see, I grew up, again, in this PK life. And in our, in, in our church, you know, the whole Bible says, you know, spare the rod and spoil the child. So I grew up you know getting a beating now I won't go any further than that because it is what it is I personally do what I choose to do with my children which is I try to eliminate that altogether but that this is this part of the podcast may take a couple of people off so let me go ahead and give y'all the good hope good lord disclaimer because I know some of y'all about to get deep in your feelings because you know it's always this topic when you talk about how to discipline a child and we all have our, our thoughts and processes, but this is what I will say. Abuse of any kind is absolutely wrong. Abuse of any kind is absolutely wrong. So you can em- emotionally and mentally abuse your children. Yes, I know. They children, you should show them this respect. I know. They children, they're supposed to be seen and not heard. But no, no, no. You can actually abuse your children mentally and emotionally. And you can more definitely abuse them physically. So Lauren... Uh, Hill, who we we love, you know, from back in the day, and the music that she has made, she is an acclaimed songstress. We're not gonna take the, we're not gonna take her talents from her. She can sing her behind off. My time, first time seeing her was obviously in Sister Act, like most of us. But she's an amazing singer. Now these last couple of years with this whole being late and not showing up for your sets and doing all that. Now that I don't know if that's the devil made me do it moment, but I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, I have refrained from using my coinages to help in her expedition of continuing on music because my thing is this. If you haven't made a CD in I don't know how long since since Moses was put in the basket and driven across the water, you really should not be at this point showing up to conscious late. You should be grateful that people still have that ear that want to hear and people want to support your, your, your music and your journey. So that right there, let me know that there's some offness going on so I don't put my coins as far as paying money to go get dressed up and putting on shoes that don't that don't fit the the soles of my feet correctly because I'm trying to be cute but trying to be stylish and trying to be comfortable so I don't do all those extra things for folks that don't show up and don't show up on time so god bless her but that's not me but what I will say is um Lauren Hill has made some good statements so she made some interesting statements. Now, let's back it up. Her daughter, I think her name is Sayla. I may be saying it cor- incorrectly, but her daughter made some statements this week. And she was just stating that how she was really hurt dealing with the fact that her father was not actively in her life. And then she stated that Lauren used to be extremely, extremely, very, very mean to her. And I guess the rest of her siblings and that they, she basically would beat her as a kid. And we know what beat her means, at least our general knowledge of beatings, especially in the black community, means that she was probably beat with a belt for whatever reason, whatever she didn't do. But what she also said was that Lauren beat her in anger. Now, 
Lauren then came back and said that, you know, she respects the fact that her daughter was made her statements and she's growing and making her statements and coming to terms with whatever she chooses. However, she basically said she made a long child. If you go back and if you go on Internet and you look for her, her statement, her, I guess her rebuttal to her daughter's statement it's super long. It was super long. Now I read it because I like to get the gist of it, especially for when I want to talk about it. I like to just have my whole thought process. But in a nutshell, I like to break it down for you. She's basically saying, don't come for her because just like her, she beat her child, you beat yours, your great grandma beat you, beat their child and so forth and so forth. So basically, black people's been beating their kids from the existence of earth and she beat hers but she was trying to protect them and basically did the best she could now that's basically the the response if you go back and ask any old school mama you go back and ask any old school auntie any old school dad uncle they're going to tell you the same thing that they got beat they worked out for them if they hadn't gotten beat they probably would be worse it was discipline it was love it was a lot of different things and to each their own some people truly still believe that even in 2020 some people have chosen to take the higher road. And for those who have done that, you know, you, you already know what the words is. Your child is going to be a mess. They're spoiled. They're just not going to listen. They're not going to be respectful. However, Lauren Hill's child decided to say that she felt like it was more or less slave, like slavery beatings or slave mentality. And I've heard a lot of the arguments that suggested that it, that is true. Like when, you know, when black people were slaves that they would get beat with a whip just to make them do whatever it is that they wanted them to do and or to evoke fear now Lauren stated that she definitely beat her kids in anger trying to deal with all the things that were coming against her because she was making all this great money and living all these lives and trying to find some balance and so of course she claims again the devil made me do it a uh, moment that she felt like she was trying there were so many things that was coming into her home of course everybody else now I'm not here to debate you on whether you feel like you should beat your children or not, or if you thought that beating your child was good or not. However, what I liked about it was that her daughter even had enough guts to openly say that because we all know, and let me just speak for myself, because I can't put us, we all in the same category. Let me talk for myself. I'm not saying that I didn't get beatings because that would be a whole lie and a half. However, I've spoken up and said what I had to say about it to my parents about it and how I felt about it privately. However, it's hard to come up and say something very publicly to someone who, in her particular case, is a celebrity in, in a sense. So for this celebrity child to come up and say that my celebrity mama used to beat me and blah, 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 that is a lot because she already knows the ramification of what's going to happen. She knows that everybody's going to ride Lauren Hill for filth and everybody's going to have their opinions on it and everybody's going to either rally or say something against her. So for her to have taken that stand, let me just say kudos to that. How. It's just weird that it's not weird, but, you know, a lot of folks feel like they would feel liberated if they're able to say that, too, because we didn't, you know, I know I didn't agree with it. What child does like I just can't find children that's like, oh, I just Lord, I love them beatings. And even the ones that says, oh, what I'm you know, I'm better off or had I not, I would have been bad. But I just feel like it's because we didn't know a different way. That's how I feel like I know. I'm going to get a lot of flack because people are like, well, that's that new school versus that old school and that old school work. I believe in a lot of the old school things. I believe a lot of it, but there's parts of it that I don't. And I know like my mom or somebody would say, well, you know, you've only been a parent for five seconds. Call me when your kids become a teenager. I've heard all of those things. However, I just pray that the way that I'm choosing to raise my children with some with and, and I'm not going to say some form of discipline with a lot of discipline but a discipline with with ability to show love and discipline to me doesn't always come from me hitting my kids it just doesn't and I just believe that every kid also cannot cannot respectfully take that and it's not just because our kids are a lot softer than we are because they are they are we have a lot more amenities that we ever I've ever had in my whole entire life as a being underneath my parents house it's just the truth but um, everybody has the right to make the decision that's best for them. But when it becomes an abuse, the fact that Lauren Hill said that she beat them in anger for me, when you beat a child in anger, and I mean, kids will make you angry, right? They will do things that you've told them a thousand and one times. They will do things after you done showed them physically, after you done been patient with them, after you done loved on them, after you done worked one more time, you do that one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. 
and you get to the point where you get sick of that one more time. I get it. I have three. If you think my three kids are not doing that to me every single day in some type of way, it would be a lie. But that's what kids do. It's up to the adults to have self-control. So to hear that she's admitting that she beat them when she wasn't um, in a situation where she had self-control, that to me is the problem. Because any beating that you did that with your child, if you still, even if you believed in beatings, those beatings were then abuse. Because that means you didn't have any way of stopping yourself from knowing that you were doing going too far. Or saying things to kids that you know is not right. It's just abuse. There's really no other way of getting around that. And I know, I know I should not say that about the lovely Lauren Hill, but it is what it is. So I hope that now that they're speaking out about this and they're having this conversation, that I hope that this conversation brings some form of healing for them. Because I know people are going crazy in the comment sections of all these different places where I've seen the story. But, you know, people have a right. Lauren Hill's daughter has a right to speak up for herself. She really does. Um, so, yeah, the devil apparently, quote unquote, has been super busy uh, causing other people to do the things that's already in their heart to do. Um, can, I mean, can we just talk about that? Like, if you're going to cheat, it doesn't matter if like, you know, people are cheating and doing the most in the pandemic. Look at the football player that literally, I think it was a rookie football player for the Seattle Hawks that just got caught and got cut. <laughs> the word cut, that means his coin is gone. Lose his job. You about to lose your job. That. Losing his job because he was sneaking a woman into his uh, hotel when you're supposed to be sitting around somewhere uh, staying safe because you want to avoid getting COVID and still get out there and play and still get out there and get your money. Uh we have to understand that. And even the dumb, uh, let me not call them dumb because I, you know, I'm a mom first. Let's not use the word dumb. However, the very interesting basketball player who did, who left, he had um, given permission to leave for whatever the reasons was. Then he decided to go to an Atlanta uh, strip club. Bruh, you're supposed to be in the bubble. You ain't supposed to be out here fraternizing. You know, you're supposed to be getting back. I'll never understand that. I mean, you have a job that's already a high risk. You're, there ain't no way you can play football or basketball without touching somebody. So COVID is very real. It's running rampant. They done put you in a bubble for the protection of everybody around you. And you decide to leave, get you five seconds to get out and handle your business. And you go out here and get a lap dance. Yeah. So that's why I say people say that, oh, COVID is out and people are doing better. Some of these husbands and wives is only doing good because COVID is here. And because they're scared, they're going to bring something home to their wives. But on the other flip, there's some that could give two dams that their wives and husbands going to get COVID. If they want to cheat, they're going to cheat whether there's a, a, a death trap out here or not. That's the sad part. It's amazing to me. It's like COVID can't stop you. Folks out here don't give a damn about COVID. They're going to do whatever it is that they want to do. And it shows. Some of y'all ain't had to sit in that corner and it shows. It shows you ain't had to sit in that corner. Because the fact that you have no self-control and you can't sit down somewhere, Nobody goes out more than me. And by going out, I am on blog events. I used to go to blog events four days out of the five-day weekday. And then it usually one or two things on Saturday or Sunday. Now, that's in addition to being a mom, being a wife, having date nights, having family time, all of that, managing that. I just, when I think about it, I'm like, goodness, my schedule was out of pocket, disrespectful. Oh, and I was working too. Let's just put that out there too. Because not all influencers and bloggers is out here caking, right? Some of us got to continue to work and do the job that we have until things go the way we want. But yeah, even with all of that, I'm not putting my life on the wrist for nothing and nobody. And surely not the possibility of some mediocre you know what. So yeah, the devil made me do it. And the devil is apparently super busy and out here running these streets and telling people what to do. But like I said, we all have certain things inside of us that we either talk about, we know about that can trip us up at any moment. Some of them are like things that we know about. Some of them are things that other people don't know about, which was like we was growing up called a secret sin. It's those secret sins that can trip you up the most because somebody don't know that you have a desire towards whatever it is. But you know, and you're struggling with that and people don't really know that because you've been keeping it contained. That's a secret sin. So as much as if we have these secret sin and regular sin and all the other sins because sin is sin and blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, personal accountability matters. And for the fact that we can't take responsibility and say, yes, that was me and I'm sorry. 
or go get help for the things that we already know that we're struggling with, that's a problem. That's a huge, huge, huge problem. So I hope that everything does work out for Latoya and her husband, and especially for that beautiful baby that I know is about to come forth because they have had some beautiful children. He, uh, Latoya's husband, the child prior to is beautiful too. So he's, I mean, they just have some beautiful babies. And so then on top of these beautiful babies, you have the fact, like I said, she's pregnant. I mean, I felt bad in, in a way for Kevin Hart's wife too. I know people was like, yeah, you lose him how you get him. And, you know, allegedly that she might have had a relationship before his wife and him was divorced. I don't know. I wasn't there, right? None of us were there. None of us. So whatever happened, it happened. That still doesn't mean that I would wish somebody's wife, their current wife, to be having issues while they're pregnant. Because pregnancy is a very, very strenuous situation. And to think about the memories of your pregnancy being tainted, like you don't ever get that time back. There's some things about my own pregnancies where I'm like, hmm, I won't ever get that redo. I don't even want that redo because I'm not having nobody's babies. I don't care if it's an alien. I ain't having nobody's kids. I made that very clear. I love my husband, but I told him I'd have none more his kids and nobody else's. So he ain't got to worry about it. I didn't want no more kids. That last one, my third snuck in there to be quiet as it's kept. And I love her. She's like the glue that we didn't know we needed. But listen, if I had gone to that doctor, she wouldn't have been here. And that doesn't mean that I don't love her and I want to divorce my baby. No, no, I didn't say that. I said she wouldn't be here, meaning that I was already on the way to go get that hysterectomy or get them tubes tied. And um, she was already in there baking. That's what I mean by that. So we don't need nobody replaying this for my baby 20 years later talking about your mama didn't want you. That's a lie. And y'all can say it's the devil is busy, but it's just y'all mouths trying to be busy making something happen that didn't happen. I'm going to take full responsibility and say I did not want a third child because at the time I wanted to go get my tubes tied. But when I discovered she was in there, she was baking. I said, let her bake. You ain't taking no babies out of here now. That's my personal choice. But, you know, we don't like to take personal responsibility. Not not even just these celebrities. Again, I preface that we have to understand that regular people are doing the same thing. Celebrities just happen to be on a platform while they're doing it. But that doesn't mean that um, that regular people are doing are doing the same thing. Celebrities just get caught and they have a platform so we can all talk about it like I'm talking about it today. Can we talk about this week with it being Friday? Now, yesterday was National Prosecco Day. I didn't have any, but I can only pray about having some. But today I am going to get a glass of wine. I think it's my little, first of all, I'm a wine drinker. So before y'all get into y'all, what's she talking about? She only talking about something to drink. I drink wine, wine and me or bay. I am wine and bay. I have pretty much coined that myself or called myself that. I am just like wine of all wines. I love wine. It is just a great thing. I just love them. I love wine. And so I'm going to have an amazing glass of wine tonight. I'm not sure if it's going to be red or white, but it's going to be something good. I'm going to pour that glass proudly because it's Friday. Um, the last time we talked, I was talking about the flood. And this week I have a basement that is half cut up. <laughs> now, what I mean by that is um, my walls all literally have half of the wall is cut and gone because of the water damage and mud. I mean, and mold and foolishness so now the entire basement all the way around um, laundry room bathroom the whole nine everything is cut the just cut no there's no wall the floor is dug up the carpet is gone it is a mess <laughs> and it's like a chaotic organized mess but it is what it is so we don't have much progress on that outside of the fact that at least it's now cut because at first it was just you know we had dried it out as much as we could and it was just there doing its thing so now it's cut and we just have to start the process of putting it back together like Humpty Dumpty. Got to put it back together. Um, so that's that's where we are. And it is a mess because, you know, I'm still doing work. I'm still taking Zoom calls. I am still doing meetings with brands. And I'm doing all this with this noise in the background. So I have been trying to just come upstairs in my room and try to take the zoom calls but then you remember I still have three children to look after and so yeah it's been a very boggling interesting week 
to say the least. So me and wine are going to get very acquainted tonight and just have a, a glass because I want to laugh from keep from crying, but the stress is crazy, crazy, crazy. It really is. Cause I mean, just from the waters coming in and just all the things that have had to take place, my car literally just came back today, but there's no guarantee that it's going to work as well as it did before. Like they've done little things to it, just kind of get it on its way so that it can move. But I don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So to say that the, that the storehouse is under some pressure is we're under some pressure, but I'm glad because again, just like what I was talking about when I was talking about my anniversary uh, week, I believe that was last week that we talked about that. You know, when you're under stress with your partner, it's like the best thing you can do is to literally stop whatever's happening and just take a moment. We took that moment and looked at each other's eyes like we got to make sure we stay connected. We got to make sure we stay together. We got to make sure we do, we communicate and stay tight because, you know, it would just be so easy for us to frazzle and just be pointing fingers like how can you point fingers at somebody when it's a whole natural disaster. But, you know, in the midst of stress, none of you don't really always get the chance to think logically. So we're I'm grateful for us taking those moments to think logically because we don't need that type of pressure of saying things to each other that we don't mean then have to come back and apologize for or saying things to each other that we do mean and still having to come back and apologize for just because we had a moment of stress because we don't know what the future is going to be no one knows so I'm grateful for us my husband and I taking that time yesterday to have that conversation and kind of just realigning ourselves and making sure that once again when these hard times come the best thing that we can do is hold on to each other still hold each other accountable like you know, we got to hold each other accountable. We can love each other through it too. Cause like my husband is stressed and I see how stressed out he is. Cause you know, for him as a man and husband, he's, you know, concerned that, that everything's going to be on him and what decisions he's making is the decision going to be okay. And what if me as a wife doesn't agree with it? And then what if the decision that he makes doesn't pan out to the, to the end of what we're trying to see? So if you have a spouse, please learn to pray for them, pray over them, pray with them cover them love them because that stress I couldn't even imagine my our wi-fi for whatever reason has gone out too so our wi-fi is doing a number so he's trying to work I'm trying to work the wi-fi is iffy the the tv is cutting out for the kids so they can't even do the things that they're doing they're trying to play and move right through along it you know right through it and we have deadlines both of us my husband and I and we're like well how are we going to get all this done so how are we going to get all this done I don't know but I know that we're going to love each other straight through it. I know we're going to take each other, you know, and be patient as possible and walk away, but not walk away from each other. Because that's what Tom, Tommy, what's his name? Tomicus? He has a weird name. We're just going to call him Brother Tommy did with Latoya, just walking away and leaving. We're not talking about that type of leave. We're talking about the type of leave where you take a break for a couple seconds to make sure your mouth don't get slick. So you're not saying things you ain't got no business saying and doing things you don't got no business doing. That's the type of break that we're trying to be on. We're trying to make sure that we're good, that we don't have any problems, none of that. So let's just switch gears really quick because I just had to talk about this. And this is and I'm not talking about this from a, this is a political issue, but I'm not talking about this so we can debate. Um, Joe Biden has selected Kamala to be his vice president basically running mate and everybody is either on the yes we are so excited to oh my god this is the worst thing and not this is not just the this is the this is the worst thing since sliced bread this is not even just white folks this is black folks too and I understand both sides right I understand it this is what I don't want to see happen like I can respect someone who says that they're not here for Kamala right I can understand it I can respect it I can see the sides I have understood both sides of the story I, I've seen the things that she has been accused or or not have done or has done for the community I see both sides this is what I want us to understand as much as we don't like who's in office I try my very best to acknowledge how I feel about whomever it doesn't matter who's in the office right but in the same in the same token when it comes to Kamala we already know that one being a black woman she is going to be taunted she is going to be tore down. She is going to be all kinds of stuff. And I know she has to have some level of thick skin. She does. 
Because anybody that goes into politics has to come in the door with some thick skin. You can't come in that door weak. You can't come in that door crying because somebody called you something. You've got to be able to be strong enough to take a whole lot of stuff because they're going to pull the punches on everything, especially because she's black. This is what I need us to try to understand and try to do better on. I'm not here to debate you about how you feel about politics because I believe that is a personal decision that you have to make and you need to, and I respect you making that decision and I just choose to either flow or not flow with that decision, but I respect it. But in the same token, when it comes to Kamala, I think we have to understand that she's going to be under enough, enough pressure so that if you don't respect her because you don't feel like she's good for the job, that's perfectly fine. But let's not try to find ways to disrespect her because she's a woman, especially not because she's a black woman, because she's going to get a lot of ridicule. ridicule. She really is. I mean, it's only been a couple of days since they announced it, and it's already folks running with stories about her and making it more and more and more. So many issues about her, who she is, what she's going to do, what she has done. I can get you if we still keep it there, but let's not talk about her just because she's black. Let's not tear her down just because she's a woman. Let's just find ways to debate facts. That's all I'm asking because I'm telling you, President Trump made no haste of making sure he has something nasty to say about her. And I think we should try to find a way to do that on all sides. But just specifically on this, I have a huge problem with us trying to find a way, especially when you're a brown and you're black and you're trying to tell somebody and tear somebody down when it's your own. I just have a problem with that to a certain extent. Just like I've said, I've had a problem with the fact that we are upholding Kanye West and talking about how he has a mental um, health is issue, but Azalea Banks, because of how problematic she is, we've tr totally, totally written her off. Not to mention that Kanye West just literally said about how Harriet Tubman didn't really do much for the for the black people and slaves and yada, yada, yada. I mean, this man has literally come out of the woodworks with every level of arrogance and ignorance, and we give him a pass before we give Azalea Banks a pass. Both of them, I think, are probably under the same diagno diagnosis, but we will give one a pass and not the other. So I just want us to be very mindful of the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that how we present ourselves when it comes to just how we flow and move around other people. Just be aware. Take full responsibility. Don't make this a devil made me do it story. Don't make this a devil is busy. Do accept the responsibility that you have to decide. I saw one of my um, family members had posted about really liking black women and said that you really can't possibly like black women you want to sleep with them you think that they're you know exotic enough for you to sleep and lay down with but you don't really love black women and so I just want to say that I'm in black women we're using two black queens and I want to make sure that they're respected on every level no matter what they decide to step their foot into and although I teach them that people around them are not going to simply like them just because that they also have to contend with every prejudice and every drama that's filled for every woman and every man in this world. But I want us to be very clear and very careful about how we talk about certain people in certain realms because that matters. And I'm not telling you to go on a crusade talking about, you know, Trump and all that other Karen. That's not what I'm telling you either. I'm just telling you that we just have to be very careful about how we do things because we only give ammunition for the other side to use that against so I know Kamala may not be everybody's, you know, sip of tea that she may not be everybody's choice. And matter of fact, you may not think she's capable, qualified or anything else. I can respect all of that. But let's try to keep it on facts as much as we possibly can. I know that's not going to happen, but I figured I would just throw that out there because we got a lot going on this week with so many different stories of things that have happened this week. And I know that was one of the biggest stories. I don't even remember where I was at when I saw the announcement. I mean, I'm sure I was home. Let's not get this twisted. I'm still like semi quarantine. I only go out when I actually need to. And um, I don't believe I don't remember where I what exactly I was doing. Like it wasn't when the announcement came, I was excited, but it wasn't like a like, a, oh, my gosh. But I don't even know. Wait, I might have been in a car. I think I might have went out the, yet that day to go see if my car was ready, even though it wasn't. But regardless, history is still being made. I don't know any other black woman that has ever been on the ballot to be a vice president and be in the in in this top level job. This is still a top level job. And I just remembered I kept thinking about these last couple of days about how that made me feel as a black young woman as a woman. I guess I'm not considered young. I'm almost 40, but I'm young. Shoot. 40 ain't even that old. Like, stop playing. It's not old at all. But. um, Yeah, I remember thinking about how, you know, as a young girl, we would paint and do like draw pictures of yourself being in the White House. 
but never really was attaining to that actually being a reality. And it's like my daughters are living in a time where Obama, like my daughter was born. Was she born when Obama was president? I might have been pregnant with her when he when he actually went into office. And the thought that she was still alive when a black president was in office. And now we have Kamala, who's a, uh, uh, up for grabs to go into the vice president role. That's still phenomenal. That's still amazing in the, in the, all in itself. Still amazing all in itself. So I'm really proud of that. Just thinking about myself, my little pigtails, and just seeing how all that went. Now, I went to, speaking of pigtails, <laughs> pigtails, I went to visit my parents for the first time. I have not seen them prior to this past weekend since Christmas. Now, two hours away, I say, I would say about an hour and a half from Philadelphia to my hometown. And, um, but with COVID, I'm just like, we were like, no, nah, we're good. We're going to wait for this to calm down, wait for this to cool down. We obviously went up there with, you know, trying to do as much social distancing as possibly can. And, you know, I spray, you know, hand washing and all that stuff. That was very much how we moved and got through that. But it was really good to see my family, see my nieces, because I have one that's here with me. And then the other two, they're in Lancaster. And so it was really good to see them and just see how their little faces light up and get to play with them and really just have a really, really great time. I was so grateful to see everybody. It was really fun. It was really fun. But I just don't know if when the next time we'll be able to go up there because I keep reading these stories. And then I just read a story today, which again, I try not to do a lot of fear monging, but I do like to be very cautious and very much aware of what's happening. And they're saying that the CDC is warning that this fall could be one of the worst. Now that was one of the major decisions for me personally, because of the simple fact that we're going to have, um, the flu and if you have the flu who's going to be able to tell the cold from the flu from COVID the thought of that just miss is super scary because my kids get really sick in the fall that's why fall is one of my favorite holidays or one of my favorite seasons I should say but it's also the season by which I'm always extra aware as a parent like I am already full on deck knowing and aware of what could happen with my children on a regular fall day let alone now adding COVID so today, my husband and I, well, I shouldn't say today. I say yesterday, my husband and I went to uh, CVS because we wanted to get like albuterol ready and things of that sort. That's the type of stuff that I do right August, right before September. Now, I know that my kids are going to be home. Thankfully, we got that worked out that they'll be home so they won't be in their school. But still, there's the thought like fall always makes them my kids change. So we won't be going out a lot in the fall, if not really at all. When it comes to like as a family, as a unit, we just won't be. And we are not allowing anyone in our home for visits whatsoever, especially in the fall, because I cannot like I was already on a pair. I don't want to call it paranoid, but I was very cautious when we got shut down. Like we were being very serious. My husband and I sat down and made a plan so that we could plan for people when they were like, well, how come you're not coming over? How come you're not coming to our event? What, you know, what's the deal? You know, where are you? You know, are you coming? And we, we had a plan in place because we wanted to, us to make the plan before people pulled on us emotionally for us to make the plan according to what people wanted us to do. You know how people are, especially family. So my husband and I made a plan way before. And so we've already made the plan again to stick to what we already were doing when it comes to the fall, because we know that the chance for our children to be greater for them to be sick or have anything happen is a lot harder and a lot greater for them. And if the fall is going to be anything like they're saying that it's going to be, and look, if it's not, then we're all better for it. But if it is, I want to be prepared. So for that, like I said, we are restricting all visits. We haven't had visits. I don't even know since maybe January, February, Maybe some in March, I'm not even remembering because, you know, that seemed like so many moons ago. But I do know that we are not having any visitations from anybody. It doesn't matter whose side of the family that you are on. There'll be no visits coming here because we have to do what we have to do to protect them, our, our, our older kids. Um, so, yeah, that's what's happening uh, with this week. So my house is still in a wreck. We are still talking about this craziness and yeah, I don't know what this fall is going to hold, but they're saying that it's not going to be, it's not going to be a good one. And people say, well, who's the they? Well, the CDC who we're supposed to be following is saying that it's not going to be good. And I'm going to be more inclined to listen to what the CDC says. 
So I know people were like, it's just a, it's just fear. You're, you're making people scared. I can't make you scared. I can only tell you what I've been told or what I've read and the CDC, you know, is doing what they can and, um, trying to figure it all out. But yeah, I, um, I don't know what's going to happen. So I don't know how you might be feeling about it, but for me, for me, I'm being extremely cautious as much as I possibly can. That is like the goal for me is to be cautious, to be aware, to um, just make sure that I walk very circumspectly when it comes to the children. And I want to make sure that I can keep them as safe as I possibly can. Now, one last story before we end out for the day, because I want you to get out here and have an amazing Friday. I want you to get out here and have a very socially distanced fun weekend. Um, it's been raining these last couple of days and um, it's supposed to be a little decent, maybe Saturday and then Sunday is could be a whole kind of craziness going on. Not sure, but I want you to have a good weekend. And I wanted to just say that I wanted to thank you for rocking out with me with w- listening to these podcasts. This is such a great pleasure project for me, but it comes a super scary project because you don't know how you'll be received. And, you know, it's just been a joy for me to just continue making these episodes Um, I just want to send a reminder that one, we will be going our last episode for season one. I'm making seasons. Look at me being all fancy. Um, season one will end on September 11th, which is crazy, but we definitely will be having some type of special um, show for that for September 11th. And then I'm going to take a two week break, um, and start working on season two. Well, I've already been starting working on season two, but yeah, we're going to come back because again, I want to be able to support each other because I know that when the fall does come, regardless of if COVID hits or not, a lot of the major holidays that people are very, are the most depressed will start to come in because we'll move from fall over into winter and it's a lot, or I should say we should move from summer into sure enough fall and from fall to winter and people get depressed. Like that's the most hardest time of the year. I mean, we all went into 2020 thinking we were being super optimistic and then COVID hit. But if COVID hits and brings another swing and we get locked down and then we're locked down during the holidays where people are already there at their most vulnerable, I want the podcast to support that and to support people going through that. Because the reality of it is, even if you're the type of person that feels like, you know, you're not the type of person that's super depressed, the people around you could very well be so much depressed because when like Thanksgiving, family holidays, when you don't have another person to celebrate with or Christmas comes and you, you know, you're remembering a a loved one that's no longer here. This is the hardest, that is the hardest time for a lot of people to try to wrap their minds around becoming, you know, better and stronger and all of those other things. So that's why I want to make sure I'm some type of support system that can speak a word to help get you through or just have conversations with you because we're conversations with toy and figuring out how to get through that whole ordeal. It's not easy. And that's why I do t- blog about it a lot. Just because, you know, people struggle. People struggle. But today is National Kool-Aid Day. <laughs> I always know the national days. But today, yeah, today is National Kool-Aid Day. Now, I, my favorite flavor for Kool-Aid was red. Now, I know you'd be like, that's not a cup. Co- that's not a flavor. That's a color. To you, it's a flavor. Maybe you call that uh, cherry, um, whatever you like to call it. But I call it red. <laughs> so, aka it is cherry. But yeah, that today is National Kool-Aid Day. And my favorite flavor is red, aka cherry. And so, I don't have Kool-Aid. We don't drink Kool-Aid in this house. Isn't that interesting? You know, my parents, they did have it right where they would say like, oh, the things that you did with a kid, you don't do anymore. Like, yeah, we don't drink Kool-Aid. We drink lemonade. We drink tea. We drink, you know, 100% fruit juices. But Kool-Aid was cheap. I think Kool-Aid used to be like maybe two cents, five cents a pack. So for a whole dollar, you was out here, you know, feeling like you had Kool-Aid money. So Kool-Aid was cheap. Sugar wasn't as expensive as it is now for a regular five pound bag. Yeah. So, you know, you got to make your Kool-Aid, you got to put a thousand pack and whole, you know, cups of sugar and make it look like you're about to drink diabetic juice. But yeah, um, Kool-Aid was the thing back in the day. Now they have the little um, Kool-Aid jammers. 
I have a lot of my kids that drink some of them. And if I, I think we might even have some. So, okay, let me correct myself. I think we have some. And if we do have some, then yes, we have Kool-Aid in our house. They drink the little Kool-Aid jammer packets. I don't think it's the one in the same because Kool-Aid jammers ain't going to put, but I don't even think they put any much sugar in it. I think they kind of just, they kind of just make it. Matter of fact, I'm going to go and find my business to drink one today just to see what it tastes like. But I, I know it didn't taste like the stuff my, I used to make when I was a kid. Now, when I was growing up, we would always put like little slices of fruit on the top just to feel like we was, you know, healthy. We were just being bougie, literally. But um, yeah, it's National Kool-Aid Day. And so if you are a Kool-Aid drinker or if you like Kool-Aid, get you a little cup of red. I never liked grape, but if I think about it, I think the packet that we do have in this house, it may be grape, but I'm going to take one for the team and I'm going to drink it because I want to see if it's anything, even though I know the answer, how close it is to my childhood. Because again, we used to drink it so bad. It would be, oh my gosh, it'd be, it wasn't like drinking grits of tea, like sugar in your mouth, but it was not, it was an experience to drink Kool-Aid in our house because Kool-Aid was super sweet. But it doesn't change the fact that I don't normally give it to my kids. I don't. It's just not my preference. And like I said, I understood what my parents did. I mean, Kool-Aid was cheap and we always wanted to drink a bunch of juice. But I will say, though, I should go back to Kool-Aid packets because the way these kids in my house drink the Kool-Aid or the drink, not the Kool-Aid, but the juice in general, I probably should go back to that economically sound Kool-Aid. So um, this weekend... I don't have much to do. I have a couple of blogs that I'm going to put out. You can catch the blog at www.toytime, spelled T-O-I-T-I-M-E dot org. Yes, my mom was trying to be bougie. So, of course, she put an I instead of a Y. And I hate when people say LaToya because that is not my name. My name is LaToy or Toy, and I prefer Toy. Um, And so, yeah, this weekend I pr- I'm going to get my nails done and You know, social distance nail appointment has been very stressful because they zap you and take your temperature and you got to sit six feet apart and they can only have so many appointments. But, you know, self-care is 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 truly necessary. And this weekend, I'm actually going to find a way to enjoy some downtime. Uh, Saturday is relaxation day because I won't see you. So Saturday is relaxation day. So find a way to relax, like really put your feet up and truly relax. That's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. I'm going to be relaxing. I'm going to enjoy listening to other people's podcasts. I'm going to enjoy reading a book this weekend. I'm going to be continuing getting my fall uh, events together as far as my content together. And working on keeping this podcast look sounding so amazing. But yeah, that is the goal this weekend. Uh, Today is my one of my blogger friends, uh, Cheryl. And so I wanted to say, Cheryl, my blogger girlfriend, have an amazing birthday today. I'm sure we'll talk. And outside of that, I just want to say thank you to every last one of you for, again, listening, rocking out. And we will see you next week for episode number seven. I hope you enjoy today. Today is episode number six. Next week is episode number seven. Then we'll have three more episodes. And then we'll be have celebrated getting through our first season with Conversations with Toy. So hit me up. Let me know. You can find me on all social media as Toy Time Blog. And I hope you have a great day. Have a happy, 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 happy Friday. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.